Hello, this is Gershon Wolf, and welcome to Modern Music Composition. So today's topic is voice leading, and in particular, we're going to be looking at voice leading for a linear organization of atonal music. Now, with respect to atonal music, there's two types of voice leading. There's two models, the transformational model and the association model. Um, we're going to be going through a detailed example of the transformational model, but I also just briefly state uh, a, a little bit of information about the association model. Let, let's go through these um, two models. First, the transformational model. Essentially, you're creating pitch class counterpoint by transposition and inversion of a pitch class set. Now, I had a previous video on pitch class sets, so we're not really going to cover any detail with respect to how they're um, uh, uh, built, but I, I, I will go through a small review. Um, second, what you do in the transformational model is you map the notes from one set to the next, and that moves you through the piece of music. So you're mapping from one chord, chord being the pitch class set, to another chord, which is either a transformation inversion of that pitch class set or could be another pitch class set. Then there's the association model. That also involves a pitch class set, but what you're doing there is you're taking tones from the set and you're creating some coherent linear structures with it. And you're doing that by basically moving around the pitch class set into different registers. Um, you're using different dynamics, articulation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in today's example, we're going to be using set class 3-5 and that um, is 0, 1, 6. And so what does 0, 1, 6 mean? Well, if, if we look over to the right here to our uh, clock diagram, that gives you the chromatic scale um, in terms of uh, semitones. And so 0 being, for example, could be a C, which normally it is set to C. Um, 1 is going to be C sharp or D flat and 2 is D, and then you just march yourself around back up to uh, C, going through the chromatic scale. So 0, 1, 6 is actually known uh, as the Viennese chord. The reason why it's known as that is because Arnold Schoenberg used this set class quite a bit, and um, he was from Austria. So let's just briefly go through um, what this set class represents on, on the clock diagram. So the 0, 1, 6, is, it, it's an abstraction of whatever notes are associated with it. So for example, if I map out 0, 1, 6, I could put, use the 0, the 1, and the 6, and that would be C, C sharp, and F sharp. But I could also map out a 3, a 4, and a 9. That's also a 0, 1, and a 6. That would be, um, with respect to when C is 0, that would be a D sharp, E, and an A. So we've got here a, a, a D sharp, here is your E, and over here is the A. So set class 3-5, has what's called an interval class vector. And all an interval class vector is, is it maps out all the intervals associated with that particular set class. The way it works is the first column is a minor second, the second column is a major second, and then it marches across um, semitone by semitone. You have the minor third, major third, perfect fourth, and a tritone. And also all the inversions, too. So the first column would actually represent, to a, a major seventh, the second column a minor seventh, and, 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 and so on. Actually, the, the tritone is in particular because with respect to the tritone, the tritone is inversionally related to itself. So with respect to this set class, we've got one minor second, one perfect fourth, and one tritone. And let me just erase this over here so I can make it a little bit neater, so we can <clears throat> explain that. So if I have 0, 1, and 6, you can see the 0 and the 6 represent the tritone. The 0 to the 1 represents um, 
the uh, the minor minor second, and and then the one to the sixth represents uh, the perfect fourth. So let's talk about our example. As I mentioned, we're using this set class 3-5, the 0-1-6 set class. And our voice leading, what we're going to do is we're going to choose a, a particular set of tones for this set class. And that is E, A, and E flat. So if I map that out here, I've got E flat, I've got E, and I've got A. And you can see that 0, 1, 6. We've got the 0, 1, and 6. Remember, this set class is it's an abstraction. So there's many 0, 1, 6s along this clock diagram. Well, we're going to create a voice leading from that chord to C, F, and B. So if I map out C, let, let me do that in a different color. Map out C, F, and B. You can see that is a 0, 1, 6. And it turns out that you can go from one chord to the other through a um, transformation of eight semitones. So, looking a little bit more detailed with respect to how this voice leading is going to proceed. Um, you can see here's our beginning chord, our E, A, E flat. First thing we're going to do is do a T11 transformation. So that's just essentially transposing 11 semitones. Then we'll, what we'll, we'll do is an inversion once we get to that uh, once we get to this uh, D, E flat, G sharp chord, we'll do an inversion around uh, an axis that I'll um, explain to you on the clock diagram. And then we'll go through a T3 uh, transposition, and then uh, we'll end up with another inversion. And then that'll take us through this um, T8 cycle of uh, voice leading. So... This is the first example. Remember, let me just go back here. We've got E, A, E flat, and then we've got D, E flat, G sharp. So let's just go through each one of these one at a time. So to get from this chord, E, A, E flat, and do our transposition, transposition of T11, let me just diagram this real quickly. So here we've got E flat, E, and A, and then we just work our way clockwise, 11 semitones. So that takes our A all the way around, and I'll just draw that in a different color, to G sharp. Then what we do is we take our E and do the same thing. And as we wrap ourselves around, we end up getting to, to D. So that's right here. And then likewise, so well let me let me just diagram this this over here. So E flat is gone to D. Let me change some colors here. E has gone to goes to E flat and as we saw with A, A goes to G sharp. So now let's get on to the second part. We, we're, we're now up, we, we got up to, to um, D, E flat, and G sharp. Let me circle those. D, E flat, and G sharp. So now we're going to do an inversion so that we can get to D flat, G, and C. And this is kind of cool. So I've, I've written 
out the axis of inversion, actually it goes between 1 and 2 and 7 and 8. So it goes between D flat and D. And then down, down over on the other side, it goes uh, between G and, and G sharp. So what we do is the way that we get from D E flat G sharp to D flat G C is by just mirroring across and reflecting across this axis of inversion. So 8 goes to 7, 2 goes to 1, and 3 goes to 0. And now you can see that we've got our, our um, voice leading proceeding in the following um, manner. We've got D now goes to D flat. And we've got E flat now going to C and G sharp going to G. Okay, let's go on to the next one. So here now, you know, we, we ended up at D flat, G, and C. Now we're going to transpose three semitones to E flat, B flat, and E. So here we are at um, D flat. We got C, and we've got um, G. Notice we're let's just check ourselves. Our our, our set class three five, which is the zero one six. Here we've got um, zero one six. One two three four five. Two three four five six. That's correct. Okay, so. Um, how do we get to E flat, B flat, and E? Well, we just transpose three going clockwise. So in this case, C ends up going to E flat because if I take three semitones, I just go one, two, three, then I end up at E flat. Um, D flat goes to E because that just takes you down here and likewise over here with G G ends up going to B flat and notice we're keeping with the 0 1 6 uh, set class okay let's continue with our voice leading okay so here we have another inversion. So we left off at E flat, B flat, E. So let's diagram what that is. Here we've got E flat, whoops, E flat, E, and B flat. Okay, so what happens here? Let's start with E flat. E flat goes to C. Once again, we're taking that axis of inversion and then just reflecting over. So we've got essentially 4 goes to 11. Sorry, 4 goes to 11. 3 goes to 0. And 10, which is B flat, goes to 5. And I hope you can see how this um, reflection works. So we have essentially um, E flat going to C, B flat going to F, and E going to B. So this is kind of a cool diagram because at the bottom it, it shows what our voice leading was and now you're familiar with each one of these chords. Remember, all of these are derived from the 0, 1, 6. So this entire voice leading is just one single set class being either um, transposed or inverted around the uh, clock diagram, around the um, chromatic scale. So what I've got on the top here is just each one of these, it's color-coded, um, so you can kind of follow along linearly um, 
how this voice leading works. And so this actually kind of shows you the counterpoint associated with the transformational uh, model here. And so it's kind of cool because as you work your way across, you can see how the notes change smoothly. And that's important in counterpoint. And that actually gives a little bit of cohesion to um, atonal music. So let's move on. So what we've got here is our voice leading. And below is sort of how the counterpoint is diagrammed out in a linear fashion. So, and then above, of course, is the um, piece of music that is a result of the transformational model. So let's just go through each color at a time. Let's start with, I'll go use a completely different color, I'll use black. Let's start with E. So E takes us down to E flat, down to C, and back up to E flat. If I come up here, I'm going to use the same color, the, the red actually, in the, uh, in, the, in the piece of music. Here, here it is. It comes down, back up, and over. So in, in counterpoint, it's important to, first of all, be kind of simple with counterpoint. You want a low point, you want a high point, and then you want the high point to go somewhere, either low or straight across, or, you know, it, it could continue up if, if you wanted to, but that, that makes strong counterpoint. You don't want sort of zigzaggy lines going across and, and then ending up at the same spot as you did before. That's weak counterpoint. Let's just move on to the next one. Let's, let's start with, with, with A. Oh, I'm sorry. With A, A goes down to G sharp, back up to G, over to B flat, and then straight over to F. And that's exactly what's going on here, mapping this out. Whoops, I should have used blue. Let me erase that, and we'll just use blue. And that maps out the um, A. Now let's map out E flat. I will remember to change my colors. E flat's kind of cool because it takes you up to D, over to D flat, down to E, and then back over to B. And that's exactly what's happening in this diagram. Here we are up, over, and down, and over. And um, just like in the last video, I'll post a link to my website that has this sheet music and then also um, MP3s associated with it. And I'm also going to be posting, like I said before in the beginning of the video, um, a link to the set class tables so you can take a look at all the different set classes. So that's it for today, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.